All right, welcome in, everyone. Once again, the Coach Joel Taylor Show. Coach, hard to believe two weeks left, man. What are we going to do here in a couple weeks? Man, I, I don't know, I, I, but, I, but I think we're going to get on the road and recruit. <laughs> I can tell you that. Bring some good players in. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, welcome back into Jefferson's, everyone. We appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Good crowd. A little bit drizzly, ra rainy. Didn't rain for 30-some-odd days in a row. Now we finally get some of it, so uh, it's nice to have. But y'all celebrated a huge week last week. Before we talk anything football, how about your Halloween costume? <laughs> what, what was that? Uh, what was up with that? And uh, talk about what all went into that because it was not just you; it was the whole team balled in. I mean, it was awesome to see on social media. And if you missed it, check out UWG Athletics on all of the platforms. Yeah. I mean, there's there's some good stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we just wanted to have some fun. You know, uh, uh, football is a hard game. It's year round. You know, you're in a process every day. You know, trying to get better, man. And but we want to have fun along the way. And uh, you know, Halloween was going to be on Thursday, so. Uh, our varsity actually lifts on Thursday, so we wanted to make it a varsity uh, lift, a Halloween lift. And uh, uh, I told the kids I was going to dress up and lift with them, uh, but they didn't know I was going to dress up and be out there at practice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, kind of what went into the suit, I, I kind of like, you know, Martin, and I don't know if you've ever seen Jerome. Uh, so Jerome's like the, you know the pimp, and uh, and uh, so I, I got the uh, the pimp suit. I had the teeth, I had the jewelry. It was great. Uh, I tried to get a prop, you know. I I tried to make my wife come out there with me, you know, <laughs> you know, but she didn't she didn't want to do that. But uh, uh, but uh, but it was it was good, man. The, the, the kids enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, a lot of laughs. But uh, it was it was awesome. Last question before football: Which player had the best one that you saw, other than yours? Because yours yours took the cake. Yeah, but. Out of all the ones that you saw, can you think of one that was the best one? Yeah, I, I got to give it to my man Rajay Mosley. Uh, you know, Rajay's, uh, uh, he had an excellent suit. He was Prince. Uh, he painted the nails, had the suit, had the bag. And I don't know where he got that wig from, but it was outstanding. <laughs> Well, speaking of Rod Jays, he's finally over the 2,000-yard mark in his yeah. career, had, it, had his best game of the season, not only uh, running the ball but out of the backfield catching it mm -hmm. as well and picked up a huge block uh, on a big throw uh, earlier in the game. So uh, talk, just the offense in general, um, they, they didn't do much wrong on Saturday. There's probably took a little bit longer to try to find things wrong on that film, didn't it? Yeah, no, no doubt, man. Uh, one, one of the things we wanted to do, and I kind of talked about it last week, uh, I wanted to, you know, try to run the ball. You know, I mean, we got three really good running backs. Um, and it was really good to see Jace get out there and 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 get the 2,000 yard eclipse mark. Uh, he's done a lot of good things in his career here. Uh, so it was great to see him do that. He scored two touchdowns. Uh, but you got a chance to see our third back, uh, Latrell Morrell. And uh, I, I told uh, everyone that he was a really, really good back. Uh, I think he rushed for about 175-plus yards. Uh, he had three touchdowns. His first three touchdowns of his career uh, was all in one game. Uh, had a big run for about 60 yards. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Chase was there, but uh, I think he got banged up a little bit, so he didn't have uh, the production that he wanted. But uh, but I, I thought we did a lot of good things, man. It was good to see the offensive of line block some people. Uh, like I said, get to continue to run the ball. I think Quincy and Davin were uh, efficient when they were in. Uh, you know, the one thing we wanted to do was, like I said, we just want to be efficient in the, you know, the, the main plays. And uh, I think Dane might have called six, five or six plays, and that was it. And uh, those guys did a good job of kind of executing. And, uh, and you know, you see the ending score was 88 points, um, you know, 500-plus yards of offense. Yeah, you put up a lot of offense, and you score a lot of points. But I don't think people realize that game is so important to get your guys – the, to build depth, get some confidence, and put some stuff on film, not only for this year, but for the years to come. There, there's no doubt. Uh, usually you have those games, usually early on, and we, we had it kind of late. Uh, you know, so we kind of went through our growing pains. And, uh, you know, the one thing you know, we always say, you know, each week, man, we're trying to get better, trying to eliminate mistakes. Uh, and like you said, there wasn't a lot of mistakes. You know, uh, we didn't turn the ball over. Uh, yeah, he's going pretty fast there. <laughs> uh, but we didn't we didn't turn the ball over. It wasn't a lot of penalties there. So you got a chance to see when our offense is rolling really good um, and what they can do. You know, at the end of the day, I know we got a good football team. You got a chance to see it. Uh, when you score 88 points uh, in one game, I think that's a record here at uh, University of West it Georgia. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the highest um, uh, point total in uh, Division One football. So it was a lot of good things going on there. Um, a lot of, it was really, really good to see. Uh, but like you said, man, it brings a lot of confidence. 
confidence. You get a chance to get a lot of guys in the game. You get a chance to see what they can do. Uh, and uh, I think it just builds confidence um, going into the next game, but also going into the offseason as well. I think defensively as well, you saw a lot of young guys get some playing time. But I'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that hasn't had a better two, three weeks than Anthony Rochester. I think he's really <laughs> played right place and right time, obviously. But he's played some really good ball late. He has, man. He has. And he has been playing two positions for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been banged up a little bit. Uh, so he's been playing nickel when Quay went to corner. And then um, the, the next week, uh, you know, we were kind of banged up at the free safety spot. So he was able to go back there. Uh, but Ant was kind of banged up you know, early in the season. Uh, he had some ankle um, injuries uh, for like three or four weeks. Just trying to get healthy uh, there. Uh, I know he was a little bit frustrated because he's a senior. And he wanted to get on that football field. And he finally got his opportunity to get on there. And you got a chance to see what he can do. Uh, had a uh, interception last week. Uh, had a scoop and score uh, this week for a touchdown. And on that scoop and score, I don't know if you guys watched it, uh, you can see Preston Pooney coming in with some violence. I mean, he punched that ball out. It was excellent. And, and that's what we kind of preach every day and all day, man. It was great to see and show up on tape. Uh, and now, you know, you know, everybody sees the proof in it. So uh, hopefully, you know, we're a little bit more violent to that ball, you know, as we, as we go along. And then special teams, you blocked a, blocked a field goal, ran it back. I mean, you, you there, there was uh, – I think all the boxes were checked on, uh, on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it was one box that wasn't punt, checked. You did punt. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm a defensive guy, so I wanted that shutout. So that, that was a box that wasn't checked. Uh, and uh, like I said, you know, uh, that was the only downer in the in the game. Uh, you know, that uh, that was a, uh, you know, they scored in our first drive, and we, you know, we shot ourselves in the foot. They were punting, we jumped off sides, uh, they drive the ball down, and then we got them, we stopped them on third down, but we had hands to the face, and then they finally got a got in the box, but. Like you said, a good thing happened. Cam Moore got his hand up. The big Cam uh, knocked it back, and then Jet was able to scoop and score and take that thing to the house uh, and get two points for us and, and get the momentum back uh, going our way. Because uh, I'll be honest, they scored on that first drive, and everybody was looking around like, what the heck is going on? And uh, that was good to see there. And then the other score that we gave up, uh, you know, a guy trying to press and make a play and not be in position, and, and that's what happened. It got behind us, and uh, they scored there. So, uh, but other than that, I thought defense played well. Uh, we got a we got a chance to see a lot of young guys play. Uh, got a chance to see Jakari Horton play. Um, you know, Darian Harden. Uh, there was a lot of young guys that played and did some good things, man. So it was good to get those guys some experience, um, and also you know complete the shutout in the second half. So that was that was that was good as well. So uh, super excited about our defense. Super excited about our offense uh, going into Tarleton. Yeah, make sure you check out the game notes this week for all the all the stuff we missed. There's plenty of records that were broken, and <laughs> yep. we could spend the next 30 minutes talking about all those. We, we'll move on, but last question before we get into Tarleton and the fan questions in our uh, second segment, Coach. What was it like on the sidelines playing in a game like that? Well, you had you were you're way out in front, but every time I looked over, somebody was still getting coached. Yes. Somebody was still. Uh, getting you know get, they got coached the whole game yes. I mean the, you, the intensity was the same when it was 88 to 12 as it was 0 0 yes. so uh, what does that say about your program and your coaching staff yeah I mean being a young team you know every moment is coachable everyone and uh, you know I got a great staff and uh, we want to continue to teach our guys uh, and, 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 and learn and build on lessons. Uh, when you're up, when you're down, it, it doesn't matter. You win, you lose. You always want to learn. And, uh, you know, and that's where we're always going to be. We're going to coach it no matter what. Uh, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, or 20th year that I'm here, uh, you know, we're going to coach our kids and get the best out of them. And I think they appreciate that, uh, that they're getting better every, every day. It's 67 to 12, and this guy over here is drawing up a seven-man front for his <laughs> linebackers to go up against. And that's that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it was impressive to see. Uh, Coach, let's take a timeout when we come back. We'll talk about Tarleton State. They took a tough loss last week, what we'll have prepared for them. And uh, we'll hear from the fans next, right after this, on the Coach Joel Taylor Show. All right, welcome back in, everyone, to the Coach Joel Taylor Show as we are live for Jefferson's. Let's give it up for all of our great Jefferson's folks. We appreciate them having us each and every week. And uh, we'll be back one final time uh, next week as we prepare for Utah Tech. Another big upset. They beat Central Arkansas. Yeah. So just goes to show you this conference ain't no joke we're playing in. Yeah, Anybody, it, any given Saturday, man. Any given Saturday. you, you got to play. It's, it's, it's hard to win a ball game. It really is. And you got to come prepared every week. Well, let's get started. Uh, one of our favorite segments we get to hear from the fans. Uh, we appreciate them each and every week. Good crowd this past Saturday. Let's hear uh, from some of our fans to ask some questions to our head coach, Joel Taylor. 
I got all Larry. Uh, here we go. Now, I'm just going to ask now, obviously we got some weather potentially this week. Yeah. So how, do, how are we preparing for weather? Is it run the ball more? What's your thoughts on the weather coming in? Yeah, once we leave here, we, we actually got practice and it's raining now. So uh, that will definitely help us. Uh, definitely got to do some wet ball drills. You know, the quarterback center exchange uh, is always important. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, usually when, you, um, when it's raining, you want to be able to run the football uh, at the end of the day. And I think that might help us, um, you know, talk to state. They, they, like, they like to throw the ball up and uh, they got pretty good receivers. So that might help us. I, you know, I don't know. But at the end of the day, uh, we got to do a great job of executing. Uh, if it's rain, sleep, snow, doesn't matter. So you're on the bandwagon with all the other coaches. Don't matter about the weather. Can't make excuses about it. Uh, no can't make excuses. There it is. Who else we got? Here we go. What is the m one place where you have seen the most improvement this year? Oh, uh, that's a that's a that's a great question, man. Uh, let me let me think. Let me think. I just think I think I would say um, us as a team, you know, just always coming together as a team. Uh, you would think, you know, when we were, you know, one in five or two and six, whatever it was, uh, you could see, you know, you, guys could say, hey, man, it's your fault, your fault, whatever it is. But I, th I think you see in our team actually come together more, uh, and, and that's very, very. Um, um, it makes me proud, you know, that means our culture is kind of sticking. Uh, but also, man, you see those guys just been on relationships. Uh, they're enjoying the process. Uh, they understand that the process is hard and winning is hard. Uh, you know, so I think we got some tough dudes in there. And, I, and I, like I told them, I, I think uh, tough people last, but tough times don't, you know. And uh, uh, we, got a good, we got a good room in there, uh, a good team in there uh, that are tough guys. Coach, good evening. When you analyzed all the film, what I really want to know is how important did you feel like the coin toss was? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, to be honest, I, I was second guessing myself. Uh, you know, when, when they went down and scored the first time, I, I said, "Baby, should, we should have we should have took the ball and scored on them and get the momentum." Uh, but I'm a firm believer in our defense, and and I think that's how you you start the game. Uh, honestly, you know, I'm nine times out of ten, I'm always going to defer. Uh, and we deferred this time, and we won it, and uh, and uh, we we kicked it off. And I thought the defense was going to punch him in the dang old mouth, then the offense go down and score, and then we get the ball back, you know, in the second half. But um, but uh, but you know that didn't happen. And um, but I didn't uh, I did second guess myself at that time, though I did. <laughs> and the trips were our honorary captains and flipped the coin. Oh, they, uh, they were! <laughs> I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh man! I think he meant it more of that, but you, yeah, that was oh, a great answer oh, too. My bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Coach, Collins. Coach, could you give us some insight into your recruiting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, right now um, we've had actually two official visits. Um, actually, it's the first time I've did official visits during the year. Uh, the NCAA has moved up the, uh, the early signing period. Uh, the early signing period is going to be December 4th, so first week in December. Uh, so, you know, we wouldn't have time after the season to bring guys on campus. So. Uh, uh, so we had two official visits, um, you know, bringing in some really good talent as far as, you know, high school um, uh, seniors. Uh, we got about, about 10 to 11 uh, committed guys uh, as of right now, uh, some really good players. Um, we just had one this weekend. We'll have another one uh, uh, this weekend coming up at Talton. And then we have a, our last one during our bye week. Um, but recruiting is going good. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, you got that second wave of recruiting as well. Uh, you know, right now we're kind of concentrating on um, the uh, high school and JUCOs. Uh, but once the signing period ends, as far as uh, December 4th, that next week, the portal is going to open up. You know, so that's going to be the next wave. And uh, hopefully we can bring some, uh, some guys in um, uh, in January. And then we'll probably have another wave uh, in, uh, in May. So, uh, but recruiting is going well right now. It really is. If I'm not mistaken, so the port or the early window was like December 17th, 18th last yes. year. And yes. any reason why they moved it up? Is it because they added the college football playoff and stuff? Added more of that? I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, when, when I think about it, I actually think the early signing period kind of helps um, the high school kids a little bit, honestly. You know, if you push that up, okay, so now you sign, say, how many high school kids you're going to sign, and then you have the portal after. 
Right. Well, you had the portal before, and they take up all the scholarships. And, and there's then, no high, uh, high school kids can't go anywhere. Exactly. So I, I think it actually helps the high school kids. But why they did it, I have no idea. And they did it kind of late as well. I mean, they did it. I think they, they approved it maybe in June or July. You know, so a lot of people had to kind of, you know, push up their schedule, push up their timeline, um, which is tough now, which is tough. Like I said, we've never had. Uh, I've never had an OV, you know, during the year just because we didn't have enough support staff. Uh, but, you know, fortunately we got, you know, good support staff here. Our administration's awesome uh, in helping us out. I think both our visits went really, really well. Uh, so we have it on Saturday night and then Sunday, we, you know, we kind of have a, a big day on Sunday and then get them out of there. But it's been, it's been good. It's been good. Any final questions for Coach Taylor before we start talking about Tarleton State? We'd love to get one more if you got one. Ready? All right. Well, well, let's talk Tarleton State, Coach. Uh, Y'all coming off the win, obviously, Tarleton State. Uh, they were in a dogfight, man, 17-13 uh, loss. Uh, I know that means absolutely nothing now. Uh, it's a new week, and uh, we know they like to throw it around, and they've been pretty good on defense. So uh, we'll start offensively from Tarleton. What, what have you seen on film from those guys? And uh, I know they can put up some points. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, first off, I, I think – Tarleton's probably the most talented team in our in our league. There's no doubt. They they're really really talented and uh, they're really talented on the offense side of the ball. Uh, I think their quarterback's a solid player, man. Uh, makes the right decisions. Uh, really cool, calm and collected. Uh, running back now, uh, he's probably you know the top running back in our league. I think he's at, uh, actually leading in rushing or second. It's between him and a Southern Utah guy, and you still got the Central Arkansas guys really good. So um, they really like to run the football and then off the run. That's when the passing game, you know, kind of opens up, and they got uh, three really good receivers. Uh, the one receiver is number six, man. Uh, uh, he's a really good player, man, and uh, quarterback has a trust level with him. Uh, like to, they like to give him a lot of chances uh, um, up in the air, just kind of the deep ball. Uh, but he's a really good player, so we got, you know, we got our, we got our work cut out for us. And uh, I think O line, man, they're big up front. Uh, those guys do a really good job of kind of building the wall. Uh, I think their center is one of the best in the league. I think he's a really good player, number 50. Uh, so they got talent on offense, man. So we, we, we got our work cut out for us on defense. And then on, on the defense side of the ball, um, they're really good players, man, really good players. And I think they're more of the style that's, hey, we're better than you, in a sense, in how they play defense. Uh, they're going to play a lot of man-to-man, -man, right? They're going to say, hey, man, we're going to match up man-to-man -man with you. you got to beat us at the end of the day. Uh, but they got really good players. they got two good safeties, number nine and number 11. Uh, I think both those guys do a really good job, especially in the run game. Uh, number two, the, the corner, I think he has three interceptions on the year. Uh, I think he might be second in the conference in interceptions. So, uh, really good player on the, on, on the outside there. And then linebackers, they're, they're solid linebackers. They don't ask those guys to do a lot. Uh, when they got to make the play, they make the play. Uh, but got plenty of ability. Uh, up front, um, they'll give us multiple looks. Uh, they'll give us some four down stuff, some bear stuff, some, uh, some, uh, some four eye mint stuff. Uh, so they do, a, they do a good job, and I think 26, uh, the interior defensive lineman, I think he's a bound, the boundary guy, uh, he does a really, really good job, man. He's a really good player. Um, so we got our work cut out for us on both offense and defense side of the ball now. Well, offense obviously coming off their best game of the year for us. Uh, you, you mentioned some really good players for uh, Tarleton State. Obviously, we're going to want to run the football, especially if yeah. this rain's coming in, so how can we attack their front? Yeah, yeah, I think we got to do a good job up front. You know, like I said, they, they, they run multiple fronts, so our offensive line got to do a great job of IDing uh, and, and knowing who to go to, and they got to do a good job of sticking on blocks, you know. Uh, but it's hard to stick on blocks when you got good players up front. So we got to be better than them. We got to, we got to dang on hit them in the mouth first, and uh, we got to do a good job of finding the holes as well. Um, like I said, I think we got three really good running backs. They got to do a good job of finding those holes and getting those tough yards for us. Uh, but also, we got to be able to throw the ball too. You know, they're going to challenge us. They're going to load the box up and say, hey, man, you're not going to throw the ball. You got to be us on the outside. And they got really good players on the outside. You know, like I said, they're going to line up man to man. They feel like they can probably run with us and, and guard us. Uh, so we got to, you know, you know, win those one on one matchups. And that's what football is all about at the end of the day. You know, it's 11 on 11. All right, you got to win a one on one matchup, you know, wherever it is. I, I know we, we could wish we could just snap our fingers and get those takeaways, but uh, <laughs> anything anything certain we can try to do defensively to force some takeaways on uh, on on Saturday or just kind of roll the ball out there and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, you know you you had, you had Jamie Spade had two interceptions uh, uh, last week, man, and, and they threw a rat to him. You know they threw a rat to him, and Jamie was able to take one of those things to the house, which was awesome. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, like I said on that uh, that forced fumble that we had, you know, I, I thought Preston Pooney came in there and, and and punched the ball out, but he punched the ball out with violence. 
And, and that's what we got to do. You know, first guy in there got to do a great job of wrapping up. Second guy in there got to then go punch with violence and rip with violence. And that's how you create turnovers. So I, I should say create takeaways, right? Turnovers, if they, they give it to us. You know, takeaways is we're taking it. You know, it's all about the mentality for us. Uh, you know, when that ball's in the air, we got to go get it. When they have the ball, we got to go take it. So uh, we just got to go do a good job with our mentality and being second guy in there, taking that ball away. Uh, before y'all get on a plane and go about 2,000 miles west for <laughs> Utah, uh, you get one last chance to play in front of the home crowd. It's hard to believe we played seven home games yeah. this year, and it's been great. Uh, but can you give us a message to the rest of the West Georgia nation to come out and uh, support your team on Saturday? Yeah, last home game, last last chance you get a chance to see you know the 2024 West Georgia Wolves, right? And you get a chance to see it versus a really good team in Tarleton State. And I think Tarleton State's uh, ranked in the top 15. Uh, really good football team. I think they're going to come in here seven and two. Uh, you know, they just, they just came off a you know a tough loss as well, so they're going to be locked locked loaded and ready to kind of get after us. But they don't know what's coming for them, right? When they get into that that wolf den now, it gets a little rough rough in there. All right, we got to make it a little bit rougher with the fans uh, and their support. Do you see a team that's different when it coming off a loss? I know y'all y'all played Central Arkansas earlier in the season. Could you yeah. can you really see a difference after yeah. they come out? There, there, there's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're on a winning streak, you're on a winning roll. I think the hardest thing, you know, for a football team, I'll be honest, the hardest thing for a human, okay, is to be consistent. You know, to have that consistent effort. You know, uh, focus. You know, execution. It's hard. Right. And, and sometimes when you're winning, 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 you know, it's like, well, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. Or they listen to that outside noise where, you know, you're you're this, you're that, you know. And uh, when you take a loss, now all those things are magnified, you know. And then you're going to try to say, you know what, I got to, you know, sharpen my, uh, you know, my focus up, you know, sharpen my execution up. Uh, you know, so they, they'll come in here and, um, you know, with that same, you know, focus and trying to execute, um, you know, coming off a loss, you know, because at the end of the day, they're fighting for their lives as well you know uh you know because they, i think there's a it's a it's a two-way tie right now between them and abilene christian uh for the for the championship you know so um so they're gonna come in here you know ready to go um uh, fighting for their lives so let's break that tie <laughs> there's, there's, there's no doubt let's break that tie no on doubt. saturday 202 kickoff university stadium ray little field hope to see you guys there guys thank you again let's give the folks at jefferson's a big round of applause all of our servers tonight we appreciate you all. One more show. Hard to believe it. Come out next week and watch, and we will see you next time. Go Wolves.